Hi, my name's Maddie, and last week I traveled to Berlin, Germany. It was my very first time in Germany, so I was super excited to see if I could find any spots in the city to sit down and sketch for a while. I was on my own during the day since I traveled with my boyfriend, but he was working, so let's explore the city and see what we can find. On Monday I headed for Museum Island and found the Berlin Cathedral, or Berliner Dome, which was built between 1894 and 1905 in the Renaissance and Baroque Revival styles. It was heavily bombed during World War II, and the original dome and interior were destroyed. After the division of Germany, it was located in East Berlin, and restoration work on the church began there in 1975. You can visit the church for about 5 to 7 euros, and you get to go up lots of flights of stairs to see a great view of Berlin from the center dome. So to sketch, I sat in the garden in front of the cathedral, although it started raining halfway through and I had to move behind some trees for shelter. So for the sketch, I chose to not sketch the whole church, but just to choose the most interesting detail so I wouldn't be sitting out in the cold of rain for longer than I needed to. So I chose the front left side if you're facing the church tower. I started off with a sketch using just basic shapes, a rectangle that would fit the whole composition, and measuring out lines for proportions. Then I used pens to draw in the lines. I started with thicker 0805 Pigma Micron pen to do the entire outline, and then used thinner pens like 0302 for making details. To start painting, I decided to do a grey scale, grise, and so I painted with a grey that I mixed up using Payne's Grey, permanent rose, ultramarine, and a yellow of some kind. And I just painted all the shadows and to make the form before putting any colors in. After I was done with this, I did some glazing, which is painting colors over the top of what you've already painted. So all I had to focus on was the orangish tan for the sandstone, and the blue-green of the roof, and the shadow colors were already there for me with my underpainting. And after this, I needed to add more contrast, so I added more darks, very dark shadows underneath um, objects that are close together and where light won't hit, and the dark gray of the stone and some dark areas on the roof. And I was very freezing cold, so I was ready to be finished and I was pretty happy with how it turned out. So it took me almost all week to find time to sketch again, but I did. On Friday I headed to the Brandenburg Gate, or Brandenburger Tor, and it was a cloudy day, but I was really confident it wouldn't rain on me again, and I only felt a few drops before the cloud shifted and it got so sunny I was almost too hot. So this gate is an 18th century neoclassical monument, and it was built on the orders of Prussian King Frederick William II. It was built on the site of a former city gate that marked the start of the road from Berlin to the town of Brandenburg an der Havel. It is a very symbolic gate. Napoleon was the first to use the Brandenburg Gate for a triumphal procession, and the Nazis later used it as a party symbol. The gate survived World War II and was one of the damaged structures, the butt that was still standing, in the Pariser Platz ruins in 1945. 
The gate was located in the Soviet occupation zone, directly next to the border, to the British occupation zone, which later became the border between East and West Berlin. So for this sketch, I did it the same way as before, with the greys first and colors after, but I decided to add the sky because it was really striking behind the, the gate as I looked up at it. It was changing so fast though that I should have taken a photo of how the clouds looked exactly at that moment because when it came time to actually paint them, the sky was almost clear and it was a totally different sky than it had been an hour ago. For both of these sketches, I think it took me about two to two and a half hours. Not too long, but it was quite a, a bit of time to sit out and just be sitting in the same place sketching. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the challenges of travel sketching and one of those is when you're traveling with others that it's hard to find time to sit and sketch because maybe people that you're traveling with don't want to be doing that so you have to be flexible and even though I was alone and had the day to myself it was still hard to find a good time and place to just sit still for the two or two and a half hours that it took for me to do each painting. Another challenge is the weather, if the weather is bad it can be harder to sit outside for a long time if it's rainy or too cold. Your hands will get too stiff and you can't be accurate in your drawing. If the weather is too sunny and hot, you'll be blinded by your paper. And it can be really hard to see the colors you're mixing. And another warning is that you should not sit cross-legged too long like I do. Or you'll stand up and your leg will totally be dead. But most importantly, I wanted to say it takes courage to sit out in public and paint. And I wish more people would do it. Most likely, no one's going to bother you other than taking a quick glance to see what you're up to. And I think travel sketching with all of its challenges will just make you a better traveler because you're taking the time to just sit in one place and absorb the atmosphere and absorb the details in your surroundings. And just to be in one place for so long is different than maybe running around trying to see everything in the city. So next time you head outside anywhere, whether it's your backyard or a different country, do some travel sketching, sit down, make yourself comfortable, and share your sketches with me on Instagram using the hashtag travel sketch with Maddie. And that's all I have to say for now. So thanks for watching and don't forget to stay lovely. Bye.